Hi LEGO fans! You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Well today we have not one, but two fantastic sets inspired by the 1989 Tim Burton movie Batman! Today I'm going to be unboxing, speed building and reviewing set number 76139, the 1989 Batmobile from LEGO DC Super Heroes. But that is not all. Oh no, that is not all. We also have its baby brother. I'll also be unboxing, speed building and reviewing set number 4033, the 1989 Batmobile Limited Edition. And because you can never have enough Batman, we'll be comparing the 1989 Batmobile to the limited edition version and the 76023 Tumblr from 2014. Getting back to our feature presentation, the 76139 Batmobile contains a massive 3306 pieces. The part count also includes three minifigures which come with this brick built minifigure display stand. We have photographer Vicky Vale, a 1989 themed Batman, and a Jack Nicholson inspired Joker. Where does he get those wonderful toys I hear you ask? I got mine at the Lego store on the day of release and that's how I got the free limited edition version. The 1989 Batmobile retails for 250 US dollars and is most definitely not a toy. In fact the recommended age range for this build is 16 plus. With the premium price tag comes a box that has a premium look and feel. For the most part the box is a gloomy matte black but all of the details are picked out in gloss. It makes it super tricky to film but you guys are worth it. The box is adorned with 1989 era Batman theming. On the side of the box we also have a very cool top down view of the 1989 Batmobile and an actual size photo of the Batman themed rims. On the other side of the box we also have a side view. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Over on the back of the box we get a closer look at what's inside the set. We do of course have the 1989 Batmobile which I believe comes on a rotating display stand. The display stand also incorporates this Ultimate Collector Series style plaque. With a part count of 3306 pieces we have roughly 77% more elements than we got with the tumbler. That gives the 1989 Batmobile some impressive dimensions. It's fairly low profile with a height of 5.8 inches or 14.7 centimeters. But when it comes to the length this thing is massive. It's almost 2 feet long with a length of 23.9 inches or 60.8 centimeters. Interactive features include an opening canopy, but I don't think this is going to be minifigure scaled. Behind the wheel we have a detailed control panel, but it does look like we're going to have the unfortunate addition of stickers. And perfect for cutting through garage doors and breaking into chemical factories, we have two pop-up machine guns. With a huge part count and a recommended 16 plus age range, I've heard this can take up to 9 hours to build. We're feeling a little bit more bullish about this and expect it to take about 6. But we can't do anything with it like this, so let's open up the box and see what we've got inside. Proving once again that I need a bigger film studio, here's everything that came inside the box. We've got 24 numbered bags of Lego, it's like Advent all over again. A 434 page instruction booklet that's roughly the same thickness as the Gotham telephone directory. Two small tyres. Two not so small tyres. And just what I always hoped for with a $250 Lego set, a sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and build the magnificent 1989 Batmobile and today this is going to be a 90 second speed build.
And here is the completed 76139 1989 Batmobile from DC Superheroes. Build time today was 6 hours and 52 minutes, and some parts were definitely trickier than others. The end result, however, standing almost 2 feet long, is very impressive. It's big and it's black, and if you handle it too much it gets covered in fingerprints. Do I look like I'm joking? No seriously, I had to use Windex on this to get all the fingerprints off. I felt like I was cleaning a crime scene or something. We're going to start out by taking a detailed look at this sexy sexy Lego set. There will be lots of close up shots with graphic 4K detail. I'll also be demonstrating some interactive functions. And before moving on to the smaller versions, we'll be taking a look at these wonderful toys. Yes, we're going to get up close and personal with the minifigures. When I said I wanted to move up in the world, this is not exactly what I had in mind. But we definitely need some more room to appreciate the first really cool feature. If you happen to have a display space that's 2 feet wide and 2 feet deep, this one's just for you. The 1989 Batmobile comes with a turntable that enables you to turn it through 360 degrees and appreciate all of the little details. It's a really cool feature, but it does require a lot of space and a little bit of faith to start with. The turntable is simple but decorative and features a stickered fact plaque. The actual information shared on the fact plaque is pretty basic. Apparently the Batmobile is 21 foot 9 inches long, 7 foot 10 inches wide, and can go from 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. That's nearly as fast as Mrs H taking off from the lights on her way home from work. The maximum speed is unknown because I guess there's no speed traps in Gotham City. And the fuel is high octane 97% special, whatever that means. The fluid movement of the turntable is aided by this more specialised Lego element. You'd usually find something like this in a Technic crane. Showing you how this connects to the Batmobile is going to give me some palpitations, but here we go. The underside of this amazing model is quite a thing to behold. As you can see, it has a very rigid chassis and it's a lot more robust than you might think. It also has these rather useful blue pieces which show you where the centre of gravity is. This is where you attach the turntable and the Batmobile simply sits on top. It's actually quite awkward to attach the Batmobile, but once it's there it's pretty sturdy. This underside view also reveals a couple of moving parts including the working steering, and another mechanism hidden deep within the car which shall be revealed later. By far the best way to appreciate this epic build is to get down on its level and take in all of the detail. With 3306 pieces there is a lot to see here. As you'd expect with a high performance vehicle this sits very low to the road. In fact the front diffusers sit only 7mm off the ground. Hidden away at the front of the car are some very discreet and minimalist headlights. These also come with one of the most bizarre stickering instructions that I've ever seen. Lego actually provides 6 clear stickers to put on the back of these trans yellow pieces. The clear stickers have no printing and seemingly no point. Also at the front we have an epic jet turbine intake that utilises Lego train wheels. Equally impressive is the curved fairing on the outside. Literally every surface of this build is covered in thoughtful detail. The aerodynamic surfaces at the front of the car are made up from multiple stacked plates. Even the slope panels at the front of the car have been meticulously engineered. These attach at an angle and give a very flush end result. Each of the wheels includes a printed personalised hubcap and the tyres are supplied by the world's leading tyre manufacturer. If you didn't know that's actually the Lego Group. Moving along the side of the car, apart from many fingerprints you'll notice very few exposed studs. There are a lot of snot or studs not on top building techniques at play here. A lot of the exterior consists of panels that you build and attach to the outside. Underneath each side of the car we have some very impressive mechanics. I'm not sure if this is part of the exhaust system or more likely part of the weapons system. In particular you'll notice a stack of Lego roller skates used as fins for dissipating heat. There are also side mounted grappling hooks which look awesome but don't really do anything. Also visually impressive are the large air intakes with diffusers mounted behind. The back wheels are all about traction and we have these large 81.6 x 44 Lego tyres. These are probably some of the most expensive elements in the set and on Bricklink you'll pay about $10 per tyre. On the leading face of the wing you'll find another panel set at an angle. This has some kind of sticker detail which appears to be a latch or maybe somewhere to add fluids to the car. As we approach the rear of the Batmobile the level of detail kicks up a gear. There's a pair of batwing shaped fins which were surprisingly complicated to build but actually look very very impressive. I'm a big fan of those sleek aerodynamic grooves. The rear of the Batmobile is as impressive as it is shiny. 
I'm pretty sure this thing was powered by a jet turbine, but nevertheless we have four chrome tailpipes. These are made from monochrome minifigure heads and certainly gives a Batmobile a premium appearance. The taillights are probably not street legal, but Batman being a vigilante just won't care. Also emerging from the back end of the Batmobile is the business end of that jet turbine. It looks very impressive and is made up of quite a few Lego elements. This also doubles up as a way to activate one of the interactive features. I'll show you what that does in just a moment. Another super impressive visual part of this build are the aerodynamic fins on the back of the car. Although these look very simple, the assembly technique is actually quite difficult. I'm pretty sure I had to rebuild these twice before I got them right. A little patience and perseverance was required, but the back of this car looks phenomenal. It'll come as no surprise that the right hand side of the car is a mirror image of the left. But it does give us the opportunity to take another look at the sleek lines of the Batmobile. Notice that the ground clearance at the front and at the back is pretty much identical. As there isn't anything to see here that we haven't already seen, let's move topside. The top down view of the Batmobile is equally impressive, equally shiny and equally covered in fingerprints. On top is a very distinctive sliding cockpit which protects Batman from the elements. Just behind that you'll find another air intake which reminds me of a Formula 1 car. The windshield is made from a smoked translucent material and wraps all the way around the driver. This is a single and rather unique Lego element. To gain access to the interior it's a simple case of sliding the canopy forward. The sliding mechanism is really neat and I like the way you have to lift and then slide the canopy across. When the canopy is closed it holds everything in place keeping those sleek lines nice and tight. With the canopy open you can see there are two seats inside. This is good because otherwise there'd be nowhere for Vicky Vale to sit. But with such a narrow opening it's really tricky to film inside so I am going to have to remove some pieces. <laughs> That was kind of scary but not as bad as I thought. The seats are exactly what you would expect to find inside a sports car. Lots of side support to hold you in place through tight corners. Just to prove the point in case there was any doubt, this is most definitely not a minifigure scale build. An important feature for safety and comfort are the headrests. They really do look like they should have some kind of padding on the front. But in all honesty I really can't think of any Lego elements that would achieve that. Inside the Batmobile is where most of the stickering is. You'll notice some switch gear between the seats and even more buttons and dials on the center console. We also have a sporty looking gear shifter. Behind the wheel is a bewildering array of switch gear and dials. There's even some kind of computer monitoring system. To the left of the driver's seat you'll find even more switch gear thanks to even more stickers. Thankfully we also have some conventional controls including a steering wheel with Batman logo and what you probably can't see underneath the steering wheel are the gas pedal and the brake pedal. No clutch so this must be an auto. As you'd expect on a $250 2 feet long Batmobile the steering does actually work. This thing has the turning circle of an oil tanker and parallel parking is probably not going to be an option. The front of the 1989 Batmobile is sleek and refined with more curves than an episode of Baywatch. I love the sleek lines which flow over the front of the car and the sleek black hood with barely a stood on display. But one of the exterior features I like most are these sawtooth panels which hide a secret. If you had any doubts about how badass this build is I think this just squashed them. There is some stickering on the side of each gun to illustrate the mechanism but I think there's no doubt as to what these things actually are. Chemical factory here we come! The 1989 Batmobile is an incredibly cool set and I can't wait to compare it to the smaller version let alone the tumbler. But before we do that let's take a look at the awesome minifigures that came with this set. Included with the 1989 Batmobile is a minifigure display stand and three minifigures. Renowned photographer Victoria or Vicky Vale. Batman remodeled in his 1989 movie outfit and Jack Napier aka the Joker. Before we take a look at them let's focus on the minifigure display stand. 
I've got to confess I didn't quite get this when I first saw the set. But as part of my research for the video, I did go back and watch the movie. What you see here is a ledge near the top of Gotham's Gothic Cathedral. These things, as I eventually figured out, are gargoyles. These featured in the final scenes of the movie just before Joker falls to his death. Oh, stop your bleating about spoilers, the movie came out 30 years ago. Once you understand what this thing is and its context within the movie, it's actually a really nice way to present the minifigures. Victoria, or Vicky Vale, is a journalist who's usually based in Gotham City. She was played by the amazing Kim Basinger, who was all over the place in the 1980s and seems to have disappeared. In the context of the 1989 movie, Vicky was a photographer, hence the SLR camera. Although Vicky's costumes change throughout the movie, this is a perfect recreation of the leisure suit she was wearing at the end. The sand green torso has printing that recreates the overlapping top. The continuity of printing down onto the legs is perfect and even includes some printing on the waistband. Around the back we have some more printed detail around the neck, and you can see where the wraparound elements on the front of the torso are tied at the back. The printed detail on the face is very good and could just about pass as Kim Basinger. The expression on the front is pretty demure, and turning around the head to get to the alternate expression reveals a snarl. The hair is not exclusive and I'm sure I've seen this used a number of times before. Most recently it was used for Stargirl from the DC Superheroes collectible minifigure series. If you check out my channel you'll find a detailed guide on how to feel out all of the minifigure blind bags. Although Vicky Vale isn't the first character you think of when you think of Batman, she first appeared in Batman number 49 in October 1948 and was created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Moving on from Vicky we come to a much more recognisable character. I'm Batman. Batman is of course the alter ego to billionaire Bruce Wayne, the American playboy philanthropist and owner of Wayne Enterprises. He has a couple of accessories including this Batarang, and what looks like a grapple hook launcher. Before we take a look at the printing, check out that headgear. Usually Batman is wearing a standalone cowl, but for the 1989 version we have the cowl and the cape built into one rubberized element. It looks absolutely magnificent. It's a single molded piece made out of flexible plastic and then has this Batman logo on the front. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Minifigure printing is limited to the torso and the legs are just a standard pair of black legs. On the torso we have grey printing to pick out Batman's fabulous abs. But the best bit is the gold metallic utility belt. Although this is completely obscured by the cape we do have some printing around the back. Again we have more grey highlighting the muscles and the armoured suit. And we also get the back of that utility belt picked out in metallic gold. Like most LEGO Batman facial prints, we do have a white band around the top of the head. This allows Batman's eyes to show through as white through the cowl. On the front we have a pretty much expressionless Batman. But if we rotate the head we get a rather less serious grin with teeth exposed. Batman in 1989 was of course played by actor Michael Keaton. I don't think there's enough detail to comment on our likeness between the minifigure and Michael Keaton, but this is a great looking Batman. And finally we have the most recognisable villain from Gotham City, the Joker! The Joker was introduced in DC Comics on April 25th 1940 and has spawned an incredible number of Lego minifigures. The 1989 Joker was played by Jack Nicholson who accepted the role under strict conditions. These dictated top billing, a very high salary, a proportion of the box office profit and his very own shooting schedule. He comes with an accessory in the form of this revolver that looks much shorter than the one that brought down the Batwing. The leg printing shows off Joker's tartan trousers, but these really should be printed all the way down to the feet. Just like the movie, the Joker is wearing orange shirt complete with cummerbund and necktie. There is also an acid squirting corsage and a purple jacket. Printing around the back is more limited and just shows off the creases in the back of the Joker's jacket. Complementing this fashionable costume perfectly is a pair of lilac gloves and a purple fedora. The facial expression is perfect and shows off Joker's maniacal expression complete with yellowing teeth. No alternate expression this time because you would see it peeking out from underneath the hat. So that is the fantastic 1989 Joker. He's almost perfect except for the missing printing on the pants which I just don't understand. And he came very close to being my favourite minifigure from the set. But that cape and cowl element for Batman is so fantastic, I've just got to give him first place. So the 1989 Batmobile is a fantastic set and the minifigures really add an extra dimension. 
But this is not the only 1989 Batmobile we're taking a look at today. Let's move on to its baby brother. This is set number 40433, the 1989 Batmobile limited edition with 366 pieces. Valued by LEGO at around $30, this was actually a free gift with purchase. As it turns out, this is actually a very nice gift. On the retail market, these are selling for $70 to $80, and I kind of regret what I'm about to do. On the side of the box and mimicking the full-scale set, we have a top-down view of the Mini Batmobile. There's even an actual size representation of the wheels, which as you'd expect are much smaller. As we shift gears from the front to the back of the box, things just get better. Just like the 76139 set, this also comes with a decorative fact plaque and a turntable. I'm not sure if it turns, but to be honest, I don't really care. We also have the limited edition Batmobile's slightly less impressive dimensions, a sneaky peek at the view behind the steering wheel, and how cool is that? We have stud firing guns on the hood representing the machine guns. This is such a cool and relatively valuable collectible that I actually have some regrets about opening it up. But leaving it in the box is no fun, so let's see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. We have four numbered bags of Lego. An 82 page instruction booklet. Two 16 by 2 plates. And a familiar looking sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and put together the 40433 limited edition 1989 Batmobile. And today this is going to be a 30 second speed build. And here is the 40433 1989 Batmobile Limited Edition from LEGO DC Super Heroes. Build time was 1 hour and 2 minutes, which goes to show how good a free gift with purchase this thing actually is. It's no wonder people are paying upwards of $70 to get one of these on eBay. Just like its big brother, this smaller scale version sits on a decorative display stand. You can even spin the model around to examine it from a multitude of angles. There's even a smaller version of the fact plaque, complete with limited edition wording. The turntable incorporates a spinner which is mounted underneath a large satellite dish. There's no specific place underneath the Batmobile to attach the display stand. I just pick a central spot which doesn't obscure the display plaque. There are two 2x16 plates to give this plenty of structural stability. But let's face it, nobody's going to give this to their kids to play with. At the back you'll find two large wide tyres for traction and two more narrow tyres at the front for control. The wide rear tyres are very useful for driving an interactive function. Spewing out of the back of the Batmobile we have a large trans red and trans yellow fire element which rotates as the tyres move. We also have some rather fancy wing elements and the same tail pipes and tail lights you see on the bigger version. No rear activated pop up machine guns this time but we do have another feature which I'll show you in a second. The lines of the 4033 Batmobile are every bit as sleek and dynamic as the bigger version. Just like a sports car, we have very little clearance at the front, and very little clearance at the back. We also have smaller scale versions of the air intakes and the diffusers. No side mounted grapple hooks this time, but we do have what looks like part of the exhaust system. The front rims are wrapped in these 30.4x14 tyres, and at the back Batman's ramped it up with these 37x18 tyres. The front of the car looks magnificent, and even includes the air intake for the turbine. We also have understated headlamps, and it's impossible to miss those front facing machine guns. These are basic stud firing guns, but certainly do the job. The hood of the 40433 Batmobile is every bit as sleek and shiny as the bigger version. Also on the top of the car we have the same air scoop, and a slightly less fancy canopy. This one has no sliding mechanism, so you have to flip the lid. Inside you'll find a driver's seat, but no passenger seat. 
Controls are much more basic and consist of a steering wheel plus a 1x4 tile with some instruments printed on. Although we don't get a minifigure with the set, we do get something to hold a minifigure in place. This minifigure from the Batman movie is not the right period, but he does prove that this was built to minifigure scale. You can even close the canopy with a minifigure inside. Something I forgot to point out on the bigger model are these windows or whatever these round things are on the side of the car. That same detail has been recreated on the smaller version. Also taken from the bigger version are these fuel filler caps. As a 366 piece LEGO Batman set this is very impressive, but considering that LEGO included this as a free gift with purchase it is outstanding. This is easily one of the best freebies I've had from LEGO in a long time. So now we've had a chance to poke around in the glove box and kick the tyres, let's compare this to the bigger version. So as promised here are the 76139 and 40433 1989 Batmobiles side by side. It's like it just had a little baby. As you would expect the limited edition version is considerably smaller, but both of these models do an equally impressive job at recreating the 1989 Batmobile. Needless to say the scale of these two builds is very very different. The limited edition Batmobile is 10 studs wide whilst the 76139 version is a huge 28 studs wide. That's almost as wide as a standard Lego base plate. Both of these models are truly excellent and they look great displayed alongside one another. I just feel really sorry for Batman fans that they can't lay their hands on the 40433 version without buying the big one. Sure it's nice to get an exclusive free gift but this is just way too good to be hidden from the masses. My favourite of the two has to be the 76139 Batmobile but I've no idea where I'm going to put this. I can't exactly have it driving down the street in my Lego city. But cool as it may be is this the best Batmobile ever created? I think it's time to introduce the Tumblr. This is of course set number 76023, the Tumblr from 2014. It's a 1869 piece set and retailed for about $200. In fact in retrospect it actually makes the 1989 Batmobile look like a bargain. I'd love to give you a detailed look at some of the cooler features of the Tumblr. Check out those large side mounted air intakes for example. We also have large front mounted wheels which appear to have no steering and four enormous rear mounted wheels delivering an incredible amount of traction. But ultimately this is not a video about the Tumblr. We're here to do the bat dance and party like it's 1989. Compared to the 1989 Batmobile the Tumblr is tiny and I know which one I'd bet on in a drag race. Lining these bad boys up nose to nose the 1989 Batmobile has a considerable advantage. Everything about the 1989 Batmobile is bigger, blacker, sleeker and sexier. I thought the Tumblr was good but the 1989 Batmobile knocked it out of the park. And so finally we can bring all of these iconic Lego Batmobiles together for the first time. Each one is beautiful in its own right and each one is a very satisfying build. Of course the challenge now is how to display all of these together. That's a really nice problem and something only future Jeremy has to worry about. So that was set number 76139, the 1989 Batmobile from Lego DC Super Heroes. We also saw set number 40433, the 1989 Batmobile Limited Edition, and there was a brief appearance from the 76023 Tumblr from 2014. As a $250 set this was a lot of money, but thankfully that deal was made just a little bit sweeter by the inclusion of the 1989 Batmobile Limited Edition. Would I recommend that you go out and buy one of these wonderful toys? Well firstly check your bank balance because it's a lot of money, and secondly get that tape measure out to make sure you've got somewhere that's at least two foot long to display it. Other than that it's absolutely fantastic! I really hope you enjoyed this 1989 Batmobile unboxing, speed build and review video. If you did a thumbs up is always appreciated and please feel free to drop into the comments section and leave your thoughts on this marvellous set. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe and we'll see you on the next build video.